There are many enigmatic giant ruins that can be found within Japan. Super megaliths so old, a number of the largest have eroded away to a state of unrecognition. An archaeological site which at the time of its life would have undoubtedly dwarfed nearly all other civilizations upon Earth. A civilization which far outstretches the modern urban sprawl of the Japanese coastlines. A lost super-civilization responsible for the construction of numerous pyramids found throughout the landscape, some of which are said to lay beneath several meters of Earth, which has slowly consumed them over the millennia. Amongst these curious ruins are extremely perplexing, apparently sliced megalithic stones, pyramidal capstones, and also, like many places dotted around the world, legends of giants. One of the many things Japanese culture has become renowned for over the centuries is their ability to create swords, steel weapons of a far superior quality than their rivals, giving them an edge over their foes for many centuries. One must wonder, where did this advanced knowledge of sword making come from? Was it mere ingenuity? Or descended knowledge left by a far more superior, entirely different, and far larger race of people? Many sword-making technologies, which even to this day, impress and perplex the many specialists who delve into the nature of this advanced metallurgy. Amongst these enigmatic and amazing swords is one in particular, one that for obvious reasons stands out from the rest. Known as the Norimitsu Odachi, at over 12 feet in length and weighing nearly 15 kilograms in weight, this sword was masterfully created over 2,000 years ago, with no other intention than to be used by a warrior of gigantic proportions. The Nadachi type of sword was one of the weapons of choice on the field of battle during the Namboko Cho period. During this era and far before, these swords were rarely created for decoration purposes. The price of their construction, the time and care needed in creating just one single sword, meant that most were indeed manufactured for the purpose of battle. Additionally, the cost of creating such an enormous sword would have been considerable. Was this enormous sword once used by an equally enormous warrior? Understandably, many have denied such explanations as a tangible possibility. Yet regardless, a satisfactory explanation for the creation of such an amazing object remains to be seen.